Hey everybody, Joel Hansen here. Today we are at Caesar's Palace to take on the Bacchanal Buffet. It's about $60 a person, it's not cheap, but I heard this is the best of the best. So let's go try it out before I hit the airport and leave Las Vegas. So let's go. Before we get to a buffet with over 500 food items, I have to give an extra special thank you to both management and the cashier staff. They helped me get into the restaurant in a timely manner when I had to go catch a flight shortly after. Huge thank you to them. Please note this review is just a absolute objective review. There is no complaints. I appreciate all food items for what they are. This is just my personal opinion of what this food items tasted like and this is exactly the info I would want to know if I was prospecting going to the Bacchanal. It was overall a very pleasant experience. I'm just letting you know how the food tasted. So with that, let's get to it. Wagyu, smoked brisket, a taco, baked halibut, bone marrow, braised short rib, corn. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video and welcome to what is the craziest buffet experience I've ever had. This is the Bacchanal at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. So I'm going to eat the item, show you it on screen at the same time, and tell you a little bit about it. So that taco I just ate, pretty simple, it was made to order, I went with steak, now let's move on to the brisket. So this was a smoked brisket they had. As you see me ripping apart there, it was definitely very, very, very soft. However, I would almost say the brisket was almost a little overcooked, um, as it was like kind of overly tender. Um, it tasted great, it had a nice smoky flavor, not a very strong, strong smoky flavor, but still a bit of flavor. Um, here we're going on to some of the Wagyu. So this was a Wagyu beef roast they had. Um, I will say, interestingly enough though, there wasn't actually a lot of spice or flavor to it. It was mostly just beef. So although the beef was a pretty nice beef, it wasn't that flavorful. Going on to the uh, baked halibut here. Um, so this was a dish which was a little bit more flavored. This was something that I didn't feel like you need to put salt or pepper on. Uh, it was baked kind of in a little bit of a sauce, already flavor on it, compared to the both beefs I just had previously. This again being the uh, beef short rib, again kind of a flavored or seasoned dish. So again as we go through this essentially I'm just going to tell you what I thought of the items um, as I think that's the best way to go through it and then as we get into it I'll tell you a little bit more about what I thought of the overall experience. So here I am trying this Cajun corn. Very much enjoyed that. It was just a corn kind of with a Cajun um, sauce. Here is the bone marrow which is very very popular at especially this place but with a lot of individuals coming to the Bacchanal. So bone marrow it kind of just tastes like fat. Um, so it's just kind of soft, it's just kind of rich, it kind of just tastes like a glob of fat which is not a bad thing. Here we're going into uh, trying some of the sushis. I also got some crab legs. Um, I have of course some ribs. I got a beef rib, a pork rib, brisket, and a tri-tip sirloin. A uh, baked potato there, a load of potato, and another piece of the Wagyu. So going for the crab legs. Crab legs, I mean, they're pretty self-explanatory. People love crab legs in these buffets. And they were really big crab legs. Um, and they taste it like crab legs. There's nothing really to go wrong with them. I mean, there's just nothing really else to say. What I will say is what you probably saw for the first couple minutes of this video is this buffet literally has over 500 options. It literally took me about 20 to 30 minutes just to actually see every part, every section of this buffet. Like they have an Asian section, they have a pasta section, they have a meat section, they have a seafood section, they have a kind of vegetable salad section, etc. So going into the sushi. So the sushi was good. Um, the little maki rolls were solid. The uh, sushi themselves, the tuna sushi I had there were also solid, but note I'm using the word solid. Um, I would say they still were not on par with what I would get at a designated sushi restaurant, even a all-you-can-eat sushi restaurant where like the sushi is made to order. Um, although I have had buffet sushi before and this sushi was of a slightly higher quality than that buffet sushi, um, but again, like I said, for the price tag of this place, which was 65 American dollars, um, I was expect. I had pretty high hopes. Let's be honest. I was expecting the quality as if I went to, you know, a very like like a half prestigious restaurant because that's what they're really going for here. Not just a casual buffet, but a prestigious buffet. 
that loaded potato, very, very tasty. There is bacon on there, everything in between. I had no complaints. Here we're moving on to a beef rib. Um, kind of self-explanatory. However, the beef rib, it did not taste like it was smoked. So I really like smoked meats. My beef ribs uh, generally that I most enjoy and most eat often are smoked. This was not smoked. It was just kind of like braised, I would say, kind of like a braised beef rib. So although it tasted delicious and was still a beef rib, um, it was not very uh, big in size. Kind of looked like it was a little like ripped up. Um, and the flavor was just okay. Um, this was the tri-tip uh, steak. Um, which was good. It was basically just like a beef roast. Similar to the other beef items that I had up to this point, there was no real flavor. Like, there was no spices or anything used to cook it. It was just plain beef. This now was a pork rib I was having. This is what they call the St. Louis smoked, por smoked pork rib. And to this point, this was my favorite item I tasted. Hence the little hand signs and the blowing of my head. It was definitely the most flavorful item. Really enjoyed it. Going back to the brisket, which I did enjoy. It was smoked, as I mentioned, just a light smoke, and it was quite, well, it was very, very tender. Almost, again, like a little too tender, which was the first time I've ever had smoked brisket where I was like, wow, there's really not much texture. Here we go for a few desserts. I had some little donuts. I had some cupcakes. I had some mousse. I had a lava cake. I had some pineapple. We also had a banana cream pie. I had two kinds of gelato, coconut and cookies and cream, and I had two creme brulees, a pistachio and a normal creme brulee. So again, as you saw at the beginning, like you really have to fathom. Oh, and there's a taco. I also picked up a little taco because um, I like the first one. The first one I had was steak. This one was a uh, chorizo, I believe it was. Um, that's actually an image of my first taco, but you get the picture. Uh, so with, again, this place was just like there's so many options and I literally basically tried to try every item or every section I couldn't try every single item but I tried items from every single section this was a pecan bar lovely pecans cranberries lots of sugar um, kind of a nice little underlying coating absolutely loved it here was a, uh, a little uh, mousse um, it's kind of like a chocolate mousse. It was in a little green dish. Um, and it was great. Like, nice little flavors. You know, nice and sweet, nice and light, etc. Um, it was fine. Like, but, you know, you can't really go wrong. Went on to one of their donuts. So they had three different kinds of donuts. They had plain, they had strawberry, and they had chocolate. That was the strawberry one I just tried. And it was tasty. Um, I've had very limited exposure to strawberry donuts. So I thought this was a really good one. Biting into the chocolate one, I did find it was filled with also a chocolate filling, um, which it tasted fine. It was like, it was an okay chocolate donut. The lava cake here, um, which is essentially a cake filled with kind of a warm or like soft chocolate filling, it was pretty solid. Nothing wrong with that. No complaints. Um, here we went on to the first creme brulee. This was a plain creme brulee, uh, which I mean, it's hard to go wrong generally with creme brulee. Now, the creme brulees there were kind of like sitting out, if that makes sense. They weren't, they didn't like just torch it and hand it to you. It was kind of already sat there torched. So then I decided, hey, well, let's try the pistachio uh, creme brulee because that sounds delicious. I'm a big pistachio fan. Um, however, trying it, eh, let's just say it had a really odd taste and uh, kind of one of the items I didn't even want to eat. Here comes the banana cream pod pie, or banana cream pudding little thing they had there. Banana pudding, I guess you could say. Um, it was good. I love banana pudding. Um, this tasted kind of like a mix between a half commercialized, a half homemade one. So it was right. It was fair. Going into these cupcakes, which looked absolutely extravagant. This one was called a birthday cake cupcake. So I expected it to be tasting kind of, if this makes sense, have a birthday cake flavor. Not just be like a plain cake with icing and a few sprinkles on top, um, but to my unfortunate uh, finding, it was not flavored in anything, it was just kind of a plain cake, and it really wasn't that spectacular. Going into the pineapple, the pineapple is great, I'm a big fan of pineapple, and did def definitely did not disappoint. Uh, what I'll mention right now is kind of a little bit about the atmosphere. So the atmosphere of this restaurant was very, very interesting. Again, for the price point, $65. Um, I was kind of expecting it to be a little bit refined. However, they are playing like Hannah Montana in the background, some top 40 hits. It was overly dark. It was kind of really weird. Um, I definitely was not expecting the atmosphere. And this was, I believe, on a Saturday night around 8 p.m. 
I just tried the coconut gelato there before, and now we're trying the cookies and cream gelato. I did enjoy both. Um, I am more customized to ice cream than gelato, so there is fine differences that you have to be used to. But considering it was a gelato, which again are generally a little softer, they're a little warmer, um, kind of known, I don't know if creamier is the right word, but kind of softer, that's kind of the way I put it. They're both solid, um, quality gelatos, especially pretty cool to be at a buffet. Here was the uh, kind of uh, Asian inspired section, so we had a number of different um, items which I decided to partake in. So I had a lentil salad there, I had some marinated watermelon, I had some salmon, I had another St. Louis rib, I had some more brisket, some corn, I also had a Asian beef rib, I also had a little bit of a pomegranate salad, and I tried some Asian beef and broccoli. So starting with the marinated watermelon. Um, I've had this before, they're always very interesting flavors. So at first you taste the sweetness, and then comes in kind of like an acidic, um, kind of an oily flavor, so it's almost like the marinade was kind of an oil and vinegar emulsion or mix of some sort. Um, here's the salmon, it was very interesting. So the salmon, I would say, was definitely cooked more like a medium rare or raw. It was by far the softest and most pudding like texture salmon I ever tried. Um, I actually didn't like it. I liked my salmon with a little bit of texture and it was just like pudding. This was a kind of Asian beef rib piece. It tasted fine, but I wouldn't describe the quality any better than you would get it like a I don't know, I don't want to say another buffet, but it was just like, it was a fair, it was fair for Chinese food. I uh, just tried the pork belly, um, which is a, another favorite from a lot of people here, individuals, uh, at the Bacchanal, which is good. I mean, it's hard to grow on pork belly, it's basically uncured bacon. Here's going back to St. Louis ribs, again, at this point, still my favorite um, food item that I had. Just, it was smoked, it was tender, but not overly cooked. Um, and the flavor was great. I mean, part of the flavor was coming from the smoke and the barbecue, but the barbecue sauce, but hey. Again, back to this brisket. Um, still, I'd say at this point, probably my second favorite item that I had. Um, again, the flavor was on point, just a little, like, soft. Like, again, maybe borderline overcooked, which, again, I, I just speak very, very objectively. This is just a um, review of a $65 buffet meal. So you have to understand that. Um, again, this is, you know, I'm not purposely critiquing the place, just telling you what I thought of every single item that in hopes if you do go to this place, you know exactly what you want to try. That corn, though, I loved it. It was a Cajun, I think, again, I think it's actually like a mayonnaise kind of, it's very, like, thick sauce, but it just went so well with that corn, I absolutely loved it. Um, again, and I really did enjoy the majority of the items here. Uh, again, if it's just, you know, some were overly exceptional. Going into dessert, I had a carrot cake uh, pudding, I had some kind of flan cake, I had two donuts, I had caramel popcorn, I had some kind of Hawaiian coconut thingy thing, and I had a little ube chocolate um, ice cream cone. Uh, so I came back from my dessert to find my cutlery gone, which was kind of weird, which is what I'm looking for right now, but I got cutlery. Uh, I guess maybe they thought I left and somehow left my camera there, which would be interesting. But caramel popcorn, it was good. Like, I mean, how can you go wrong with caramel popcorn? Which I, apparently they did make there. Um, I don't know if they really did, but it was great. But it's kind of like just a finger food. Here is this Hawaiian dessert I had. So it was basically like gelatinized coconut chunks. And then they had like this kind of uh, almost orangey, mangoey, fruity mix on top. It was cool. I've never had anything like it. Um, it was kind of like a coconut jelly, uh, which I mean, hey, it was it was good. I decided to try one of the uh, vanilla donuts or like the more plain looking donuts, not the chocolate or strawberry. Twitch was good. The flavor I describe it was vanilla. I don't think it was filled. At least there's no distinguishable filling as there was in like the chocolate one. Then here we're back to one of the strawberry donuts, which again I very much enjoyed. Um, nothing wrong with it. It was just like a little donut, and it's kind of cool, uh, very cool presentation for them. This was a little uh, caramel apple kind of dish pudding thing that I was told by a gentleman I had to try. So it looked like a little cauldron, great presentation, and essentially what it was was a very, very, very strong flavored, like candy apple flavored pudding with caramel on top. If you've ever had a caramel apple sucker or caramel apple lollipop, the ones that are dipped in caramel, that's exactly what it tasted like. Very kind of artificial, but 
a very unique and cool little pudding dessert thing. Here's some kind of, uh, I don't know, I forget what it was, exactly what it was called, but some kind of fruit, flan cake, kind of whatever it was. I normally would not pick an item like this, but I wanted to, si uh, to try it and just see what it was like, and it was fair. It was like, it was an okay dessert, but definitely nothing to write home about. Um, and again, maybe it just more wasn't for my palate. Going back uh, to these uh, ube ice cream cones, I uh, really like these little things. So it was, I think I'm pronouncing it ube. It's some kind of flavor. Um, I think it's kind of an Asian flavoring thing, but it was in a chocolate cone. And I mean like, so it's like sweet in chocolate. How can you go wrong? Sweet and chocolate, which I love both if you're not familiar. Here's this little carrot cake kind of pudding custard thingy thing, which was surprisingly good. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really liked the taste of carrot cake, and it was just like a cool little dish. I've never had like a carrot cake pudding before, essentially. Um, so a cool th item that I would definitely recommend. They also had marshmallows there. Like this was a strawberry marshmallow. I've never really seen marshmallows at a buffet, and especially when there was like no like fondue station or anything. Um, I mean, it was just like a marshmallow. Here I went for some watermelon. I decided to try one of their macadamia night cookies. It looked absolutely delicious. Another ube cone. I had a little flan uh, custard thing. I also had a Nutella filled donut pastry and a green tea uh, mousse. So going for that macadamia nut cookie. So I generally like cookies. I would never be like, oh, I'm the biggest cookie fan, but I generally like them. However, this cookie was exceptional. Like, exceptional. Mind-blowing. This, but at this point, was by far my favorite dessert. Like, I mean, who would have known that this buffet would have such excellent cookies? But seriously, the macadamia nut cookie loved it dearly. It literally put me back in my seat. Going for the watermelon, I mean, it's watermelon. How can you go wrong? I don't think I need to describe the watermelon any more than it's watermelon, and it was good. Um, so tasty like that. Going for this little uh, fruit kind of flan thingy thing. Which is kind of like just like a nice little white light custard. Um, just like nice and sweet. I love the berries on top. I usually like these kinds of items. And uh, it was solid. It was, you know, there was absolutely nothing wrong with it. It was absolutely fair. Which is kind of what I found with a lot of the desserts. Like, all of them were fair. And the really only thing dessert I didn't really like was the marshmallow. But... It just, there was only a few items that were truly exceptional. Here is the uh, green tea, kind of the matcha um, mousse, which was really cool if you like matcha. This is the Nutella filled or hazelnut filled pastry, um, which was exactly what it sounded like. It was basically like a little donut with Nutella on the inside. Again, it was a really cool item. It was tasty. Uh, nothing wrong with that. So at this point, it was about 9.30. By the time I got into the buffet, which had like over an hour wait, it was probably about 8.30, 8.40, so I was only uh, only had about an hour there, um, had another ube cone, and then I had to catch a flight at 11, so I had to basically finish up and race out of there, um, just finishing up that macadamia nut cookie, and I went back to try some more of their cookies because it was literally that good. So again, with the macadamia nut cookie, and... I also decided to grab one of their uh, oatmeal raisin cookies because I figured, hey, if the macadamia nut's that good, let's try an oatmeal raisin one because uh, I figured it would be great and gave it a try. And guess what? It was delicious. They have good cookies. Macadamia nut. So overall, what do I think of the Bacchanal? Well, the Bacchanal was definitely the most extravagant buffet experience I've ever had. Literally, there are just so many options. You could literally spend hours there just looking at all the food. The diversity and variety was like a 10 out of 10. Absolutely, absolutely exceptional. As I mentioned earlier, the management staff, absolutely, absolutely exceptional. I found myself often with empty water glasses and without drinks, which is a uh, thing that the servers do there. So that was a little, you know, whatever. Um, but the food itself overall was all very, very good. I only found a couple items that were truly, 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 truly exceptional. However, it is something I would definitely recommend experiencing once or twice.
this this is my car look what I come back to look how deep this snow is I'm just getting like it's like a foot deep and this is my car you literally would not even be able to recognize it like I this is just absolutely ridiculous there's like a foot of snow on it and somehow I need to get it in my trunk oh my gosh I need to get the snow off of this thing uh, this is winter all right everybody so Vegas was a lot of fun I have a lot of bad words to say about the cold and the snow. This is not what I was hoping to come back to after a lovely week in warm Vegas, but thank you so much for joining me. It was a lot of fun, great pleasure. I have a foot of snow on my car. This is, you can't even tell it's a car, so. <sighs> Winter. I like the sun. We come in to a lovely friend subscriber, Miss Jamie here. So Jamie, go ahead. Hi, I just wanted to let you know that he's awesome. I always watch him. Um, I want to shout out to my daughter English, my son Andre, my daughter Kiki, Les, and Shima. I love you all. Hey, amazing.